we're pleased to have restarted our living and deceased donor kidney transplanted baths at one of the largest units in the country. Uh, the patient pathway was designed uh, with the support of our leadership team, uh, with the engagement of our doctors, the nurses and other kidney patients. We started our transfer program, we have successfully transplanted many patients. We hope to continue this in a sustainable manner uh, through a difficult period uh, for our healthcare system. I'm Rajesh Shiva Prakasan, Consultant Transplant Surgeon at Royal London Hospital, Bath Health NHS Trust, London. COVID has caused significant disruption to our transplant services across United Kingdom. All the units have worked harder with the local patient groups and with the national organizations and developed safer pathways for patients to undergo kidney transplantation from live and deceased donors. I'm delighted to share with everyone our recent patient's experience, Joe Clancy, who donated a kidney to his wife, Frances Clancy, and made a successful recovery. I'm thankful to both of them for their intent to share their experience to assure other patients across the country to undergo the procedure when the opportunity arises. My name is Joe Clancy, I'm 68, uh, and this is my wife Frances, she is 63. Uh, we've been married for 38 years and we live in Manor Park, East London. And it's a big day tomorrow, isn't it? Yes, it is, yes, <laughs> because uh, tomorrow uh, I should be having my left kidney removed. And I shall be receiving it. <laughs> Frances uh, had kidney failure 18 years ago. Uh, and three years ago, uh, she was referred to the uh, low clearance clinic at the Royal London Hospital. So what's the process been? Because I'm assuming in the lead up to surgery, you have lots of appointments, there's lots of information given to you. Um, how has that happened and has that been different because of COVID? Right, so we, COVID almost put it out of our minds. We thought nothing's happening in the hospital. And then suddenly at the end of June, I get a call from a lady um, called Vicky, who I'd never met, who's the transplant coordinator for the recipient. And she said, have you and Joe given it any thought? Would you like to go ahead now? We're going to start up our transplant program with live donors. Uh, and then it all happened really quickly, didn't it? Yes, they, it happened very quickly. They said, right, you come in, you get a COVID test, and then you shield for two weeks, and we will give you, you know, your operations will be done the week beginning the 20th. And uh, it was all very sudden. <laughs> One difference was that um, because of COVID, we had a lot more uh, conversations with the medical team uh, by telephone and by video conferencing. Oh, yeah. we really liked the video conferencing, didn't we? I mean... It... Yeah, we did. We, we, we had a long chat with, uh, with the surgeon Rajesh, uh, who called us by video. I assume also perhaps video is better because... Um... You don't have to travel to the hospital? Oh yeah, it's brilliant. We sit and wait in the comfort of our own home for the, the, the appointment to take place. And it felt very relaxing. It's very, yeah, it's very, very good. And then at the times that you've had to go into the hospital, has that been different? Has there been different processes in place to, to shield from the yeah. COVID side? Because we are now shielding, uh, we get access to the green area in the hospital, which is guaranteed COVID free, if you like. And you know, only certain members of staff can go in there. And, you know, we would go in along a separate green line in through the revolving door. Separate and lift. Separate lift and everything. We won't yeah. be able to have anyone come in and visit us. And the shielding has to continue for four weeks after the operation because of the immunosuppressants that I will be well and truly dosed with. Um, so that will be a little bit tricky, I think. But they've encouraged us to bring tablets, phones, to keep in touch, video links with our friends. So, yeah. and I think we'll be able to see each other. <laughs> yes, I think we'll be on the same ward, the same recovery ward. 
as we said, tomorrow is the big day. Um, what will tomorrow look like? And how do you think there might be different? Well, we'll be dropped off at seven in the morning <laughs> and Joe will go in for his surgery virtually straight away. We will again go in the green zone. We've got a letter to prove we should be there and we'll go up to, we've been told where to go, which I imagine is a different surgery, again in the green area. And we will, we'll, the surgeons will meet us there. We'll meet the anaesthetist and well. <laughs> Hopefully everything will work out fine. Hopefully when we wake up. <laughs>It's now six days since our operation and we're both feeling, after a few groggy days, a few rough days, we're both feeling extremely well and we're now ready to go home tomorrow. Um, Francis' kidney function is now 64%, which is absolutely amazing, considering a week ago it was just 11% and she can already feel the difference. Um, Fran, would you like to explain how you feel? Well, for the first time in many, many years, I don't feel sick, I don't have a headache, I don't feel tired, I, d I don't feel depressed. It's, it's just amazing, absolutely amazing. Some of the days uh, there has been a little bit of pain and discomfort, uh, but now we're pain free, discomfort free, uh, and uh, we're just looking forward to going home. Um, uh, I mean, uh, the staff here have been absolutely wonderful all the way through. Uh, we've had excellent care, five-star service uh, from all the surgical team, uh, from all the nursing staff, just about everybody. They've made us feel very, very comfortable. Um, and, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it has been uh, a very, very good experience. It's, it's interesting because there are fewer patients than normal. So I think we, oops, I, I think we really feel we have had VIP treatments, <laughs> and that's made up in, in a huge part for the, the lack of visitors because obviously we're in a green zone, and therefore we can't have friends and family coming round. But the, you know, the staff here have been so sociable and so kind on top of their nursing responsibilities that we haven't, you know, missed people quite so much as I thought I would. No, no, and, no. and also we have set up WhatsApp groups uh, with our friends and family and neighbours uh, and, and their messages of support and love have been really, really very, very helpful to our, to our progress. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's been a huge bonus for us. Um, and, um, you, you know, I mean, like a, the COVID threat uh, hasn't been a concern at all because the hospital has put in place such very, very strict procedures to avoid any contamination. Uh, we're in this kind of a specially created green zone where uh, the staff are, are very, very careful uh, about uh, not, not going into other areas of the hospital uh, to bring in uh, any contamination. Um, and really, we, we, we haven't felt any risk whatsoever. You know, no. We're perfectly happy. With, uh, with the measures that they've introduced to, uh, to keep everybody safe, staff and patients. It's now two weeks since we've been, we've been home from hospital and uh, we are getting stronger day by day. Uh, about a week ago, we went out for a walk around our local pond, which is about a mile and a quarter. Uh, we shuffle around, uh, but uh, we've been doing that on a regular basis and every day we're getting a little bit quicker. All the uh, issues that I've had over the last three weeks, the operation and the recovery period, it's all been tremendously worthwhile just to see the impact that my kidney being transplanted into Frances has had on her health because it's just amazing. She is just back to where she was 20 years ago with the amount of energy that she has and I'm very, very grateful for that. It's now three weeks since my transplant operation. And I can say to you, I'm recovering well from that and I am completely free of the symptoms of CKD. The biggest difference in my life is the fact that I am sleeping like a normal human being now, probably from about 11 to 6, whereas in the last two years, 
or more even, I had to remain in bed 10 or 11 hours in order to, to get together the energy to get through the next day. Amazing. <laughs>